ship! Let's Please take it! Yes! Yes! Hello and welcome to the Thresher Football Show. I'm Dan Page alongside head football coach at Bethel College, A.B. Stokes. Bethel College, 53-3 victors over Sterling in their opening contest of the 2023 season. Got to do it at home in week zero, and it was quite the crowd. Uh, the heat was kind of fading away. It was nice. Beautiful evening for football coach, and, uh, you know, one's out of the way. Yep, one is definitely out of the way so it uh it, it, it was fun but you know it's crazy the one is gone and now you just move on to the next right now the next right <laughs> now the next absolutely <laughs> there you absolutely. go the threshers get the 50 point victory and uh, so many good things happened in that football game uh, i guess we could start chronologically uh with everything um but uh in the first quarter, uh, you guys get a safety first, right? Two nothing, yeah. and that was uh, Frank Driscoll and Ernest Ferrier after a great punt from Jackson Walker that yes. put Sterling on their own two. Yeah, 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 for sure. And Jackson Walker, we were just uh, talking about him earlier today. What a what a first game that he's had for us. We're excited to see how season goes. But yeah, then we the defense man. I feel like they played well all night and. Uh, Found, you know, the beauty of them is they, they kind of picked up where they left off scoring points. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, uh, I think, you know, one of the top defenses in the country when it comes to uh, defensive touchdowns, like our defensive points yes. uh, on last season. And they picked right back up. And, and honestly, if you wa watch the film, uh, <laughs> it, it looks like it, it could have been a touchdown, a defensive touchdown. Sure. Uh, as Frank Driscoll just ripped the ball right out of the quarterback's hand. But uh, I think they, they stopped his forward progress and called it a safety. So, But it, nonetheless, defense is scoring. Absolutely. Uh, three interceptions in the game overall. And you had four interceptions against Sterling last year. I think – now, I'm not a hundred – percent sure on this i think he led the nation in interceptions returned for touchdown last year as a defense yeah i definitely know uh i always say just top five to be safe because i know they were <laughs> i know they were up there uh yeah. I, could, I probably should start saying top three because i i know that they were up there and uh again like i said picking up where they left off to have uh, Kay miller you know uh get a, a defensive touchdown i believe his first pick six of his career yes. so that's exciting he was excited that he caught it. You know, so many times he's been in a situation where it's just like stone hands kind of situation. Oh, yeah. And uh, he knows I, I know him, so I can give him a little static on that. But, uh, yeah. yeah, he played a great game as well. Um, you know, he had a sack as well in the game and uh, led the team in tackles, I believe, with nine, didn't he? I mean, it's up there somewhere. Yeah, he did. I, I mean, we, we, knew, we, we knew who Kay Miller was for a long time. Yes, sir. And so uh, I, I – I'm not shocked nor surprised or, <laughs> you know, like, and I, I'm just telling you, hey, wait, there's more. I'm telling you, there is more. You will be seeing Kay Miller around. So. Certainly in his fifth season, and I talked about it in the broadcast, it was really fitting that it happened against Sterling because his second year at Bethel's when he got hurt against Sterling had to miss a lot of that season and uh, using his fifth year eligibility to kind of have a little redemption in that way. So uh, I thought that was a great uh, kind of comeback story as far as full, full circle moment. Uh, other scores in the first quarter, DJ Sears, one of, well, two of his four rushing touchdowns came in the first quarter. Uh, one from 11 yards and another from 35 yards out. That put you up 15 to nothing in the first quarter. And, uh, man, he was so elusive. Even when guys would make contact with him, DJ would just stick his shoulder down and keep driving. Yeah, you know, it's uh, he's an upperclassman now. And he's been, he's been playing great football in this conference for two years now. And, uh, and and he was doing that as an underclassman, you know. And mm -hmm. now he's he, he's more he's more developed, you know, uh, more more matured physically. And uh, again, like he he's squatting, you know, over 400 pounds, and and you know that's a lot, especially for a quarterback and of his size. And he's 
man, he, he, he's just, uh, he, he's, he's turned into a different man out there. I mean, the, the same man, but, mm -hmm. you know, just a little bit, a little bit more mature with it, so. Yeah, the stat, uh, squatting 400 definitely helps when you get hit so many times a game. You got to get back up. Oh yeah, oh so, yeah. Uh, and also keep your helmet on, right? <laughs> yeah, we we almost got some duct tape and put it around. I made a joke on the broadcast. I was like, he's going to be wearing his helmet to class on Monday. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> but a DJ gets four rushing touchdowns in the game but in the second quarter he found Trayvon Madison for a 35 yard touchdown pass uh it was a beauty uh Trey did a great job of uh, beating the corner down the field and uh, man it looked good it did it, it it really did it was a great uh route and throw and catch you know it was just really pretty in a the crazy thing is they they worked on if they got uh man coverage with single high safety uh that they were going to call some some one-on-one -on -one routes for for uh, some of our receivers, and it just worked out for for Trey. And I know I was telling you uh, last week about, yes. about Trayvon Madison. He he's just getting <laughs> warmed up. He's just getting warmed up. We've seen him uh, do some crazy things, but we've got a lot of uh, good offensive weapons. Uh, we feel like so, but it it was it was a a beautiful beautiful play. And then a few seconds later is when the interception return for touchdown from Cade Miller happened. Um, you know, Sterling rotated in about three different quarterbacks, uh, multiple running backs into what they did offensively, and uh, he was able to get an interception off of one of the backups. And then in the – I think that's out of order there because I believe the Sterling field goal came in the second half. If not, No, if no, not, it was uh, – It was the second quarter? It was – Yeah, it was second, second quarter. quarter. Yeah, because yeah. it was 36 to 3 at half. Yeah, that's right. The rest of the way, DJ Sears in the third quarter rushes for a 19-yard score. Um, and then going to the fourth quarter, early fourth quarter, he finds Jaden Cartwright on a slant, uh, slant route. Rather, uh, I was looking right at Jaden. I didn't even look at DJ catch the snap. I was looking right at him because I was wanted to see what he was going to do in that situation. Um, you know, anytime you, you've had a new player in, where it's uh, Jaden Serta or Larry Cherry, guys like that, uh, I'm looking at him. I'm, I'm watching what they're doing because I want to see what they're like. Because we're still getting used to so many new guys rotating in. Right. Right, right, yeah, and it was a, uh, it was actually a great, great play by by Cartwright as well because he, mm -hmm. you know, he 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 was supposed to run a, a different route. Oh no! But it's one of those things where uh, the the corner he he was playing them uh, to mm -hmm. the outside. His route was supposed to go outside, and mm -hmm. you know he made a he made a heads up decision because the play was actually going to the opposite side of the field. Okay, but he made a heads up decision. I think DJ had noticed like, hey, if if he if he runs to grass, come, grass, I'm going to throw it. And yeah, <laughs> he's a big target. Yes, he is. And that's what he did. And because Denton's like, that's not the route. And I'm like, it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> I mean, it's he's it, like, you're right. It doesn't matter. Uh, you, you both have played the game. It's sometimes so much about instinct. Yes, yes. And that's when, you know, you know, uh, I think, our, you know, our guys, they, they definitely feel confident in, in the freedoms that they have with, within the systems uh, that we run. Uh, I think they feel confident, but the goal is to you know to, to make them as play as free as they can be. But you know, not just confident in it, but I'm confident, and then I actually make the play. You know, what yeah. I mean? and, and we saw that happen a, a couple of times uh, on, on Saturday, which is that that's something to build on. Certainly. Then the final score of the game is 53 to three. Get a 27 yard field goal from Carson Saceda. I know there was some difficulty in that kind of uh, realm of the game and special teams as far as like PATs and mm -hmm. field goals. Um, yeah, no doubt you guys are working on that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you absolutely have to at, yes. at this level. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think any coach out there has been on the other side of things looking at teams that, you know, have experienced some difficulties with that kind of, you know, they're ready to go. They're ready to send everybody oh, yeah. in that situation yeah. Yeah. preparing for an opponent like that. So, again, your score is 53-3, to three, the final score in that one. DJ Sears throws for 110 and uh, two touchdowns, rushes for four touchdowns and 186. Trayvon Madison was 79 yards receiving in the game. And then defensively, I'll finally get this straight um, <laughs> as far as things go. It, it, actually, Cade Miller had 10 
tackles, seven them of them solo. Okay. And three TFLs, one sack, and one interception return for touchdown. So uh, that is a captain. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely it is. And then Ernest Ferrier, six tackles, at, uh, nearly two TFLs. Uh, Tate Siebold with two TFLs and four tackles. You had multiple guys getting in the backfield, Brian Blassengame and Jairo Castillo, each with a sack. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a good performance to start the year. Um, you know, we kind of touched a little bit on special teams, but uh, and Jackson Walker did a great job. Had that one that was down out at the two. He had another one that was at the eight-yard line uh, with the punt. And uh, he, he's so good about catching maybe if it's a high snap or something like yeah. that. And uh, he's got enough blocking ahead of him to adjust. And uh, he just seems very cool and collective. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, you, you talk about – uh, maybe some of the, the field goal issues, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's because we focused on punt all week. Punt was, <laughs> literally, punt was stressing me out. Uh, I, I'm telling Coach Coach Schultz, who's in charge of punt, I'm like, hey, man, you know, if, if they block a punt, that's momentum, man. That's how people win games. And uh, and he's like, Coach, we'll get it fixed. And I, I won't forget on, uh, I think it was last, I don't know if it was Wednesday or Thursday, but he was sending – the house and some crazy <laughs> stunts uh to on our punt and they were picking it up and that's when i finally felt comfortable and i was like hey you know we're, we're punt, punt should be fine yeah and then it was field goal that was <laughs> but guess what we're focusing on this week yeah that's right Coach Grider got those guys he's like hey guys we need this time for field goal and they're working um doing doing early special teams and then we have a a late special teams period as well uh, where the field goal comes back out and it definitely is definitely looking better uh, snap to hold the kick but understand we we had uh almost the same snapper holder kicker for a while and ryan Greg, i know uh brain francis and logan demond yes and you know now they graduate off so we're just trying to find the the right combination of snap mm -hmm. hold and with with carson kicking so absolutely yeah getting that down early in the season kind of nipping it in the bud or as you would say um so the threshers get the 53 to 3 victory let's look at some of the other conference scores uh in the first week there's some exciting games um we'll start in mcpherson mcpherson wins 51 to 17 i think they were actually down 10 to nothing to start that game um at home against Tabor, and folks can watch that on the KCAC network. Nick and Cosnell had the call on that one. Uh, Evangel had a big game at home against Kansas Wesley, and it was you know he had one touchdown game for a long time. And Evangel got a field goal to make it 17 to seven, and then Kansas Wesley and had a chance there at the end and threw an interception. And uh, one of the defensive backs for Evangel ended up with two interceptions mm. in that game, and they won it 17 to seven. Don West had the call on the KCAC network, uh, and then. Down down in Wichita, uh, Friends University put up 64 on University of St. Mary. The Spires fall in their season opener on the road at Friends. And, uh, you know, big numbers. Uh, three different teams score 50 in the first week for the conference. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. And we'll talk about the Spires in the second half of our program as they prepare to take the Threshers on in the evening. Uh, this coming Saturday, and Bethel and St. Mary in officially week one non-divisional play from Leavenworth. You can watch that on the KCAC network. Jay Nauer has the call for the University of St. Mary. I'll be there shooting video on the sidelines. Other games in week zero, Avila goes on the road to Lindsworth to take on Bethany, and that one was kind of a a little bit of a rocky start for the Eagles, but they pull away in the end, 46-23, to the victory. Uh, Alan Litton had the call on that one. And, of course, you guys went at 53-3 to against Sterling. Uh, got a, had a good conversation with Scott Hogan, the voice of Sterling, uh, before the game, just kind of getting to know things. Um, and then down in Winfield, a late one. I, I, I got home from the game, and I already uh, put my daughter to bed. And, you know, they're still going over there in Winfield, uh, Southwestern and Ottawa, 24-22. to yeah, was That good. was quite the game. Nick Davis had his squad, you know, ready ready to go to Winfield and a good game against Coach Griffin's crew. And, uh, you know, who knows what that means for the season. It's way too early to tell, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, Kirk Caden had the call for 
Southwestern on the KCAC network of that one. So a lot of good good matchups in the first week. What do you think? Uh, kind of just you don't have to talk about everything, Coach, but just overall reaction. Um. Yeah, overall reaction is uh, you know, too it's early to tell like where everybody is, but I, overall, I, I feel like there's a lot of competitive teams out there that that you know we we definitely gonna have to be ready for, and hopefully they feel the same about us. Certainly, coach, and, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, I think that's a pretty good assessment this early. Everybody's still trying to see what each other has. Uh, you know, you, there's teams um, that I'm aware of. You know, multiple teams, I would say, that have guys that are uh, still with their new guys, still trying to get them finished through eligibility and things like that. So who knows who could a team could be week to week? Yeah. Um, you know. So we'll see what happens. And we'll set the stage for the week one matchups here on the KCAC schedule coming up here on the Thresher Football Show. But first, we're going to take a time out. We'll get you ready for Bethel and St. Mary coming up in Leavenworth this Saturday. And you can watch that on the KCAC network. You're watching the Thresher Football Show. We'll be back in a moment. Thresher fans, get ready for the upcoming school year by becoming a member of the Bethel Booster Club. Your membership impacts all athletic programs by paying for experiences last year, such as the Threshbees Award Show, postseason experiences and postseason tickets, the Hall of Fame Banquet, enhanced live streaming equipment, new banners in Thresher Gym, equipment for the Gearing Hall Weight Room, windscreens at Ward Tennis Center, and Thresher Stadium. Be a part of Thresher Athletics history in a booster club that is living out the Bethel College Athletics mission by creating life-changing experiences for our student-athletes through four levels of membership plus parent and young alumni specials. Athletics is an integral part of the Bethel College experience and thanks to your support we look forward to growing our success for the future. Visit BethelThreshers.com slash Booster Club to become a member today. Welcome back to the Thresher Football Show. Dan Page alongside head football coach of the Threshers, A.B. Stokes. We're back here up in our media room this week. It is a little warm I will say but you're fresh from practice. You you've been yeah, outside, I'm you know. <laughs> Not that bad. Not yeah, that bad. I I drank two cold bottles of water, so I think I'm ready. Yeah. So uh, so, but nonetheless, the Threshers one and zero after a 53 to three victory over Sterling at home. Now they turn your attentions to the University of St. Mary Spires, where the Threshers two years ago last played. Of course, you played them at the end of the regular season last year at home. But the Spires uh, coming off a loss 64 to 20 against Friends uh, this last Saturday to open the season. Kind of always tough to go that far on the road. And you guys are going to have to do it this week. Um, so it would be interesting to see. For the Spires, uh, some of their statistics and guys that were leading in the first game, their quarterback Shane Bishop, a redshirt sophomore, was 6 of 19 passing for 86 yards through two touchdowns and two picks in the 64 to 20 loss um, in the ground game they had a number of guys run the football it's you know at least 10 mm. in that one and uh, you know uh, Raymond Webster a junior running back got the most of the carries 12 carries for just 19 yards the Falcon defense had some success against him in fact the uh, touchdown in the ground game that came for St. Mary was from a wide receiver who had four rushes for 89 yards. Oh. So interesting to that uh, fact going into the game. And uh, so, yeah, th uh, 35 carries in the game for 151 yards rushing and just one touchdown to show for it. They threw for uh, 86 yards on 19 attempts in that first game as well. And uh, had a couple catches of 30 yards. Other than that, you know, 10, 14 from the receiving core for the Spires in that first game. Uh, looking at some defensive statistics for St. Mary in their first game, they were led in tackles by Aiden Arnold, a sophomore linebacker, had nine tackles as well as a sack um, in the contest. And then Jackson Curtis, a junior defensive back, had six tackles and a number of guys with four tackles in the loss to friends and uh, I'm sure they're going to want to emphasize some punt coverage uh, they did give up a punt return for touchdown mm -hmm. uh, in their first game so uh, they're definitely emphasizing that coming into this week and coach Henson um, you know we definitely believe and he's 
if you listen to him speak in the uh, media day, you can see, you can really see um, you know his vision and his organized kind of mindset for the program, uh, trying to you know gradually elevate things for the Spires year to year. Um, but uh, from your overall perception of St. Mary coming into this game, what do you see? Well, I mean, I, I know that they are a, a talented team. We 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 see. Uh, they've got talent all over the roster. Um, I'm not sure how many guys were were out for them. Um, mm -hmm. I know uh, number nine's a, a pretty good quarterback. I think number 14 is probably the guy that um, that they that want that they probably would want to play. And uh, I know he's coming back from an injury from last season, uh, but he may play against us. He's on the two deep against us, but mm -hmm. uh, we don't we don't know. Uh, as of yet, so I definitely think that they can be a they can be a dangerous team. You know, you're not gonna overlook anybody um, because you know St. Mary's a team that all it takes is all it takes is one 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 good uh, you know win play whatever it may be, and and I think that they can they can get rolling. So we just want to make sure that if that be the case, that we're at our best. So absolutely, coach. Yeah, um, you definitely have been at your best against the Spires in the past. Uh, you know, a lot of this group really has only played once at St. Mary. Uh, you know, this program had played there in 2018 and then in 2021, and that's it uh, for these guys that are fourth and some fifth-year seniors. So, uh, you know, it would be a different experience. I will say they, I think they had the nicest locker rooms in the conference for uh, a visiting that, team. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it, yeah, I went there in 2018. I can't remember though. I yeah, remember. yeah, they got us coming up from up the stairs, things like that from okay. uh, from the home side. But uh, a, a really nice, um, you know, interesting venue. Kind of, you know, you have a hill just off to the stadium and a beautiful view. But uh, uh, yeah, it should be a pretty good contest. Um, I, I think they're going to want to, you know, put their best foot forward after falling. Uh, by 44 on the road in their first week and they know that you guys um, you know are for real and a legit team and you've been the year in and year out the last few years and you guys are going to respect them just like any other opponent and I know coach you like to say faceless opponents and Absolutely. just focus inward and just you know <laughs> as we said in the first segment now the next yes. in this that scenario but uh, um, yeah it, you haven't had any difficulty trying to enforce some of that mentality, have you? Oh no, no, no. These guys, I mean, because we, it, it's easy to do because you know we as a as a staff we're serious about it. That's that's our mm -hmm. mentality, and we all. It's not just a me thing. Like all of our guys harp on it. Uh, even our our student our players, they they kind of you know they joke about it sometimes. Oh, they'll call us out on it. You know. Yeah. When we're trying to harbor on something but now they're next coach or whatever it may be you know so it's something that that's that's evident people talk about um the the model of your culture right if you got something that's just on a t-shirt or on the walls it's not real but mm -hmm. if you can feel it if it's an everyday thing if it's in your conversation if it's in your you know the way that you practice if it's in your meetings every day you know the way you go to class then it's, it's who you are and and that's that's really who we are, and you know I think that that's kind of what, what what will make us tough because we we're never gonna quit, we're never gonna quit. I promise you that. So uh, we we like to just give our best for for as long as it takes. That's it. Yeah, you, it's funny that you mentioned that. You know, you know, saying things and put things on T-shirts and stuff like that. But you know, there's a little, sometimes baseless for um, you know in certain situations that you know people throw the, the word family around a lot. And uh, you know, when, when it comes down to it, do you mean it? Right. Right. Is it in your blood? Is it in the air you breathe? Is, is it in your gut reaction to things? Right. Right. Yep. So. <laughs> taking a step away from some of the the more regular football stuff to kind of talk about that it's a great. little bit. We, are, we always do this. Yes, though, yes, we do. <laughs> it's yeah. like, hey, we get a little philosophical. Yeah, we're picking uh, up where we left off too. You know, <laughs> yeah. back to St. Mary. It, the, you know, you know what I'm saying though. But uh, yeah, um, I, it's always. Uh, 
it's always tough to go on the road in this conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, no question. Um, you know, St. Mary, it, 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 there's not like a sure shot to get up there. Um, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time. But, uh, you know, I feel like you guys will have the right mentality and going on the road. And you know, with so many guys that have been in this program, they, they will set the bar of expectations for everyone else. Yes, sir. And then, uh, you know, with it being such a far trip, uh, we don't get to travel everybody to this one. So, you know, we're going to take our, you know, 70, 75 guys, and they should be locked in and focused. And, you know, it, it is a uh, it's a business trip. Right? Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a, yeah. you know, I say business trip, but really it's it's a fun football game that we're getting ready right. to play. But I say a business trip because, <laughs> you know, we want to go and we, we, we really want to perform. We're, we're in a performance-based business, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but that that's also a part of, having a good time like our right. our business is fun i should put that on a t-shirt right, right? <laughs> you know what i mean our business is fun like it's a business trip but our business is fun so yeah uh, but our guys i think they will definitely be ready um just ready to play uh we do respect i respect coach uh uh coach henson it's henson mm-hmm. right yes coach henson yeah uh i, I just I don't want to get the name wrong. I know exactly who he is, yeah. but I respect him. Sure, a lot. yeah. And uh, their their program, and we 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 know like scores don't matter. Like we never look at a team. And say, oh, you know, you lost by uh, thirty points or whatever it is, and oh, so they're not good, or oh, this team played them close, so they must be good. No, we don't make assumptions like that. We assume that everybody's gonna be good. Mm-hmm. Everybody's gonna give us their best shot, cause I can promise you, we gonna give everybody ours. So certainly, and we we think, and it, and we look at it like it's a simple task. So if we can do it, so can everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, well, Coach, I have a question for you. It might be a difficult question, so pre- prepare yourself for it. All right. Okay, so you you can only take you know so many guys. Mm-hmm. What do you say to the guys that don't go? How do you keep them? you know, invested in mentally in the right place for the well, program? Well, we, we, we want to reward them, and we want to take um, as many guys as we can uh, to as many trips a- as possible. But it's one of those things we, you know, we, we don't really say much because we address, you know, we're preactive instead of reactive, mm-hmm. or proactive instead of reactive, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's things that we talk about, like, if you're going or if you're not going or if you're playing on a Monday or you're playing on a Saturday, we don't devalue you. You know, mm-hmm. it, where you play, it has nothing to do with how we value you as a person. Mm-hmm. It has everything to do with the necessary ability, right? And it's like, you may not be far off from going. And if you're not going, good. You know what I mean? You, it gives you an opportunity to figure out a way to get better. You know, so you, you only get better through adversity, in my opinion. Like we say, it take, uh, things don't grow in dry dirt. You got to get in the rain. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so we really don't address it. We just kind of tell the – we put the, the list out, and we're willing to answer any questions uh, on kids, on student athletes who, if they want to know, like, hey, Coach, why didn't I make it, the travel roster? Uh, we're honest and transparent, and we give, we give guys opportunities. Uh, we even get into depth talking about – um, being exempt and how grades matter in, in the whole right. travel situation. We break that down to them during training camp. Mm-hmm. You know, so again, I say proactive instead of reactive. Right? We're gonna we get out ahead of it, and it's not a perfect system. I'm sure that there are guys who who are you know who are, who are heard about it and you know may not, may not like it, but. You know, my advice to them is if you don't like it, get better. Like, do something about it, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't like it, do something about it. Like, mm-hmm. like pro- prove us wrong. We're, we're open to that. You know, Coach Denton proves me wrong all the time. And I can't stand mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Well, I, I think it goes back to a phrase that's been in this program for six years now. Is when something bad happens. Make something makes, good happen. Yes, exactly. Sir. Yes. yes sir. Do Absolutely. something. Be productive. You know, yeah. you know, don't respond in a negative way. Just work harder. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. So definitely that mindset I, I was just curious on that just because you know I, I travel a lot with you guys and so I just was wanted to know what what that kind of reaction was yes. so so uh, it's the Threshers taking on St. Mary and that will be officially six o'clock 
kick from Leavenworth in the non-divisional play. Still kind of conference play. It's still uh, interesting. You can follow that um, on the KCAC network. We'll have there's live stats and video from the University of St. Mary folks. And uh, should be a pretty good football game. Let's run down before we wrap up this program this week. Uh, some of the games in the conference. Um, it's interesting because there are already some afternoon games uh, because of some locations and uh, you know unable to play night games, things like that. Um, are so, you talking about Avila? Yes, Avila is playing Ooh. a pretty good game against Southwestern. They're playing an afternoon ball game. Avila. Yeah, at Avalos. Oh, my goodness. Two ranked teams. Uh, I believe Southwestern number 11 and Avala number 18 since there was no new poll for NAI until I believe September 11th is when the next one comes out. So they are go That's going to be a hot game. Yeah. Yeah. And both of those schools are, you know, black and purple yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be a, it's going to be a definitely interesting environment of course folks can watch that it's only afternoon kickoff in the conference yeah. for the official week one uh, from the Z in Kansas City Missouri Avila uh, fresh off a win against Bethany and Southwestern a two-point home win against Ottawa definitely want to prove themselves after um, you know getting by the Braves in week one and Avila I'm sure they would have had stuff to work on as well but uh, otherwise uh, mostly six o'clock kicks except for one seven o'clock kick the six o'clock kicks are Sterling at home against McPherson uh, the Bulldogs defeated Tabor at home last week Tristan Zabo threw for 400 yards that. against Tabor and uh, was the conference offensive player of the week. Um, definitely something to keep an eye on. And uh, other six o'clock games, of course, you guys in St. Mary at six o'clock from Leavenworth. Tabor at home against Evangel. Um, it'll be interesting. The Valor playing their first road conference game going to Tabor. Uh, you know, the Blue Jays uh, trying to, you know, keep their mindset right after you know a tough loss to McPherson in the first game but going back home I'm sure that'll motiv motivate them quite a bit playing at home uh, against Evangel so we'll, we'll be following that one from Hillsboro from afar and the other six o'clock game Kansas Wesleyan at home against Bethany in that football game, the Coyotes trying to come off a loss in non-divisional play, and that's the beauty of it. You lose a non-divisional play, it, you know, it really, it not necessarily doesn't matter, not but you just second half of the season make up for it. You have yeah, a chance. You still, you're still in it. You're still in it. So certainly, and uh, rounding out the conference schedule, Ottawa at home this time against friends that might be a pretty good game at seven o'clock from ottawa um an evening contest between the braves and the falcons you can watch that one as well on the kcac network well coach i mean we kind of gave a little bit of thoughts on southwestern avila but you know and i know that you know that Every, it's so early in the year, teams are still filling each other out. But uh, other than that game, what kind of game steps out to you the most? You, that friends Ottawa game is going to be interesting. Yeah, it's, it's going it's going to tell you uh, a lot about a lot about somebody. You know, certainly because I, mean? I I I definitely I, I know friends is a, a much improved team this year. I know they are, uh, and and they're they're the real deal. I know they are, and you know Ottawa is. You know, they just they just took Southwestern, so you know they're they're looking like the real deal too right now. You know what I mean? So that's going to be that. I'm I'm interested to to see how that one plays out. So certainly, yeah. I mean, the Falcons rush for over 400 yards. Of course, you're going to do that in that style of offense mm -hmm. uh, from time to time. Um, but uh, th they feel like they have you know some solid ground and footing in their their foundation. At the same time, meanwhile, Coach Davis still trying to prove something there at Ottawa, uh, you know, and get the program back to where, where Coach Kessinger had it for quite some time. So that's the conference docket for this week, week one, and we're hope 
you're as excited for it as we are here uh, from Bethel College. And the Threshers are taking on University of St. Mary. People call it St. Mary's. Uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna back up the official name, University of St. Mary Spires. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure the folks up there in Leavenworth appreciate that uh, clarification that some people tend to make sometimes. Yeah. But hey, uh, you know, you want to sound intelligent, right? <laughs> as much as you can. There you go. So, but he, again, the Threshers and the Spires, 6 o'clock from Leavenworth. You can watch it on the KCAC Network. Uh, you can follow Thresher Game Day on Twitter and on uh, Facebook. We'll have some uh, highlights. Um, you know, Twitter will have live updates, but uh, Facebook will be halftime and post-game highlights from that one. And hopefully you guys will be singing a tune at the end of it. So... <laughs> Coach, any final thoughts before we go into this one? Uh, no, man. As always, we're ready to go. And, uh, you know, I love God, my family, and Bethel College. Let's go. Roll on, baby. Certainly. All right. We'll talk about maybe in, in another program the the uh, kind of prayer that you came up with for the team uh, this season. I think it's really cool. Oh, yeah. So, but, well, for this program today, for Coach A.B. Stokes, I'm Dan Page. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This is set certainly for the fans and the parents and everyone involved. That, that supports Bethel College football and athletics here in North Newton. So for a final time in this one, roll on.